When you think about why we went into education, why people go into healthcare, they really are going into it for that purpose of making the conditions better for the people that they serve. And what we lose sight of is we move into the work as if it's a project or a job or you know, a role description and staying close to that why, you know, keeping the people really tight in the, those listening cycles and then really using that feedback to create those next actions. It really does energize people. It creates that sense of purpose. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. So in the last couple of days, we had a chance to experience our annual What's Right in Education conference. And to podcast today is the day after that conference and my conversation with Dr. Pat Greco on our reflections, what we learned, what we took away from the conference. It was just a great couple of days. I learned so much from the participants and and just the extraordinary leaders who presented at the conference. And I left extremely optimistic about the future of K-12, unbelievable leaders who are out there leading through very difficult and unpredictable times. But I tell you what, these last couple of days energized me and probably re-energized me and left me extremely optimistic about the future. So Pat, thanks for joining me for just a really informal conversation about our, our learnings. Thanks for being with us. And I think let's just start, if you would, if you can think back over the conference and Think about what your takeaways, some key takeaways were. Let's just start with some of those, and I'm sure we'll expand as we go. Yeah, and I I appreciate the thought, Janet, and just the time together to sit and reflect. I think a few of the key takeaways, and we know this, is we're unique in the work that we do because it really creates that pause for the executive leaders and their teams to be thinking about how their organization is working and learning and creating that impact. And I think as I was reflecting on the couple of days, it was it was that intentional time to pause those executive leaders coming together really coast to coast, urban, rural, suburban, deeply committed you know, to the conversations around you know, that, that quote that was used in one of the panels of, are the children well? You know, and how do we know? And whether or not the work that we're doing is making that impact. And uh, the takeaways I was coming away with is hundreds of leaders coming together in one of you know, a significantly dramatic time in education but deeply committed to making that impact. You know, Pat, as I think about what you're saying, you know, what what resonated with me and what we saw in the chat, and then as I was in some of the networking breakout sessions and just listening, you know, to people and, and then taking back the information and just setting the context for the second day, it's this need for pause, but knowing we can't stop, <laughs> you know, right. I mean, and knowing that when we pause, we still have to keep doing things as we're pausing. And, you know, just the idea that people are stressed and that there's been, as in many of our partners, natural disasters, as well as managing through COVID and there's fatigue that sets in. But there was never a time over the last couple of days that I heard, we just, we can't do this, or this is too much, or we know we can't focus on on what's important to us and we know we have to continue to do that hard work and we got to figure out how to manage ourselves and others to be able to do that i mean that's more high level but what i really took away from just the the energy of the conference was yeah we we know we need to keep going and we need to take those you know i thought heard it a number of times you know the bite out of the elephant one small step at a time chiseling away as you think about, let's let's focus on improvement because that was a good theme. Bold leadership, we heard that, and I mentioned that a couple of times. Like, I don't know if they, people were just saying bold leadership because that was the theme of our conference, and I'm sure the answer is yes. And the other thing is, I think bold leadership 
just became a natural part of the conversation because that's what people are living. But as we think about leaders being bold and we think about taking one step at a time and chiseling away, we think about the concept of improvement. What did you hear that helps us reflect on what the needs are and how improvement can help us? Yeah, and I, I, I think as I was reflecting on the conversation is what we were seeing, Janet, is actually improvement in action and already helping us. So you had some groups that have been working with us and with improvers nationally using the processes to really make sure students were learning, their organizations were safe, you know, their communities were functioning Ben Daly, you know, in his keynote, really experienced leaders coming together saying, don't get stuck. You know, the work of innovation, the work of our our belief in all children having access and improvement is the process. But our passion is really around that impact and that and that drive to have the profession meet the needs of the children, the families and the communities really well. And then making the processes really simple so that leaders can lead together and learn with one another. So, you know, maturing leaders, leadership teams, you know, the ability of the teams to really model the way. Steve Harrington, who affectionately said he's been in education for 51 years, and it's the best he's seen. You know, yeah, um, that's great. You know, Chris Hartley saying it's not a program; it's a way of leading together and really creating that clarity. And Tim Heyer, you know, in charge of thousands of students across a large region of California, saying communication and scaffolding that is very intentional. And the work of Ed Manansala on the panel saying we're being called upon to model the way for the country as California is shifting away from just harsh accountability metrics to really improvement like the professions of healthcare and industry so that we can model the way to say we're really making an impact. We're crystal clear on what impact we intend to make. The actions are aligning with that. And we're building the capability of the leaders to make that real. Thanks for pulling out those those quotes because there was a great panel and and contributions from that California executive panel, Pat, with the county offices. And just, you know, thinking about how that cascades to, to the very specific partner showcases and the concurrent sessions that we had, you know, you see pieces of that. I mean, you see very specific outcomes and how they're driving to results the actions that they're taking and the input that helps drive to those actions. That to me was another, that input to action, really looking at hearing what people say, looking at multiple sources of data, taking action on that, moving forward, seeing where we are and truly tracking the the progress and continuously making those changes. And one of the uh, so a, a nice, I don't want to say a surprise, but I always at these conferences listen for What's the common thing that's resonating in terms, sometimes it's tactical things, you know, so sometimes it's rounding, but th- in this session, it was the pulse checks, Pat. You know, yeah. I heard that over and over again, you know, in, in last year when we were trying to help districts and figure out how to modify our own practices to be helpful. And we said, you know what, rather than do our more comprehensive surveys, let's go in and really build a pulse check type approach with teachers or staff and um, students and parents. And we saw you know, consistently across the board just connections back to how valuable those were. Why do, why do you think that was the case? I'm curious from your perspective. Well, and, and when you think, you know, when we think about what we know of organizations that are healthy is you're getting close to the people who are doing the real work. You're understanding what's working, what those barriers are, and you're determining as a leadership team how to make that consistent and making sure people are feeling part of that journey. You know, so in a way, the pulse check is a tool, but it's a process and it's the purpose of that deep listening. I mean, when you think about it, living that work of improvement, it is that improvement cycle. How are we understanding how the work is being felt within the organization? Who are we listening to? 
How are we pausing long enough to say, is it making an impact? How do we know? And are we solving and prioritizing the right challenges? And is our efforts really making that condition better or worse? And how do we know? You know, it goes back to, I don't even remember what leader had said it, but you know, we don't have to be the only one trying to solve for the problems. You know, it's, we've got bright minds all over the organization. What we really need are the structures to get those feedback loops moving. Yeah, and you know, speaking of that, um, another theme and, and some examples that we saw was energy, right? Because that was another kind of focus of how do we how do we continue to either pause and reflect and gain our energy and keep that energy moving forward? And when I was thinking about that overnight and reflecting on my thoughts on the second day, it's exactly what you're talking about. It's looking at getting people involved in that conversation. And we saw that at the at a couple of examples in schools, you know, with the high schools in the Oakland area, you know, Pat, I mean, and so what you saw, I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, there are teachers who were asking, I think that was the one meeting on Saturdays because they were so engaged in the conversation about, about looking at data or looking at information, having collective dialogue, solving problems and to help kids. And that, that, that they weren't even thinking about, I'm tired as much as I'm energized by being able to do this, right? So, right. I mean, talk, you know, so we think about improvement as a process and it's a little stale sometimes in our mind and the way it comes across, but I don't think it's stale at all because it's it's that human connection and interaction of dialogue that really makes it um, become alive. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. When you think about why we went into education, why people go into healthcare, they really are going into it for that purpose of making the conditions better for the people that they serve. And what we lose sight of is we move into the work as if it's a project or a job or you know, a role description and, and staying close to that why, you know, keeping the people really tight in the, those listening cycles and then really using that feedback to create those next actions. It really does energize people. It creates that sense of purpose, you know, and there was an analogy I heard a while ago that, and I rarely use a sports analogy, Janet, and you know this about me, but there, you know, if, if you, if you set up a basketball hoop behind a sheet and you can't see the, the goal and you ask people just to shoot the baskets as a process, they'll only persist for a short period of time because there's no purpose to the actions. They can't see the outcome. So there's no reinforcement of, is this making any difference in the effort that I'm putting toward it? I think part of the work that we know when we're working in human systems is it's about the people and how do we build that line of sight so that the people feel their efforts are making a difference. They can see that impact of their actions. The leaders don't just get caught up in the hurriedness of the day, they're back to that purpose of making that impact. It really does create that energy around every conversation, budget, policy, everything becomes part of that line of sight because we're so crystal clear on the why that the what and the how now makes sense. It's not just a whole bunch of what and how that we do endlessly and have no idea if it's making an impact. Yeah, we've done this several years now. And in this conference, what I noticed is it truly is becoming more of a habit of practice, right? Yep. I mean, it, I mean, you can see that. I mean, I know they probably can't see it in themselves as much as I, we can probably see it from our lens, looking at like looking at the growth even of our conferences and how the partner presentations have grown. You know, it's, right. it's like they're not they're not going in and saying, I, I need to solve this problem. This is on me versus I'm really... I'm really get digging into the process of engaging in conversations and dialogue to help us really define what's the issue at hand and how do we begin to identify what the causes are so that we can begin to solve. And one thing I love too, in part of the conversation, that it may have been with Steve, Steve Spear, Pat, in the panel, 
but you know you don't you don't have to you don't have to really truly define all of the problem before you start solving it. I just love right. I love that. You know, I mean, right. of course that's right, but it's like just what he said there. I think is really critical. Can you expand on on that a little bit? And Steve is so skilled. You know, when you think about his work, he's worked with Lockheed Martin. He's work. He works at MIT. He's a, a scientist and an engineer by design but he knows it so well that he understands the why behind it. And part of what he's saying is, is what barrier exists that we can start teasing through? And we're gonna learn as we do it. We can't understand it until we start digging into it. We're not gonna know just by you know, sitting back and reflecting on it. We have to take some action to really understand the problems and really understand what might work to solve them. You know, so that just start and get close to that work. You know, as he says, have the people out at the fringes engaged in the conversation. He's really talking about every member of that team. And then when we look at improvement on the other end and we get too technical in the language, people view it as that process that's too hard to access it's really elegantly simple. It really is as simple as what's the challenge? What might we try next? And then the systems of how do we know if we keep track of that, we can learn from that in order to scale it to other locations. And it doesn't end up just being tribal knowledge that stays stuck within one team. So that just start is really, really critical. And connected to that is also you know, start where you are, you know, and so I think about that, you know, I think always you hear me say, if we took a hundred organizations we work with, you know, we're going to follow our evidence-based leadership and improvement framework, but it may not look the same in any of those hundred or, I mean, some things are going to look the same, but the way that we enter the world is not necessarily the same. You could have a hundred different ways of entering. Can you speak a little bit about, you know, that, that, that resonated with me and looking at, yeah, this is a great example these two days of we start right. where you are, right? Right, right. And and you're absolutely right. You know, so when you're thinking about, you know, complex organizations, they're going to have different pain points that are going to be important to them, that that should be the start starting point to their work. And as we build capacity and, you know, as, as we know, as we get their targets aligned, you know, really learn, you know, what's making that difference, start building that leadership understanding and capacity. Within a couple of years, those leaders are going to develop along that level of maturity that side by side, and you heard this, we had organizations sitting on panels that are teasing through different work, but the common understanding of improvement, that common scaffold of communication, that intent of building the capacity of their teams to really work toward a better outcome and starting to get clear on what do they mean by a better outcome? What's important to them to really improve? And then you've got leaders sitting side by side in different organizations, being able to share those insights in a pretty common way. Yeah, and that was so evident to me in the student equity panel Pat, when you yep. had Atlanta Public Schools, Austin Independent School District, West Dallas, Milwaukee, you know, with, with Lisa, L- Marty, and Stephanie. I mean, you did. It's the same thing you're talking about. You can see common threads, but they're both they're going at it with a different approach or their own approach that makes sense to them. But they're the common threads, you know, that run through that where they even if they didn't know each other, they all they you could all, you could see that relationship almost established on the panel among them, which was really, I think that to me was cool. They just, they complimented each other and had great respect for each other just through that, what, 40 minute discussion on that panel. I thought that was a really, first of all, their contributions were unbelievable, but just their ability to connect as colleagues on that panel in that significant way was extraordinary. Yeah. And I I, I think that was the other piece of it that was extraordinary, Janet, is When we go to work on Monday and come home on Friday, you know, we're viewing the lens of the work through our own organizations. And in reality, you know, we've got an entire field of people that are learning that as we bring them together, 
you know, we can build out that beachhead of what is worth scaling, what's worth having that accelerated conversation around, and how do we know what's making the biggest difference? Having that common vision, that common language, being able to define it so that we aren't just talking in the terms of these complex constructs, but really talking in the terms of, are we removing barriers? What indicators do we have of that? You know, not getting lost in state assessments, but really, you know, those, those measures that people can take a look at that really indicate whether or not kids are being successful day over day. Yeah, I think that's right, Pat. So let's close today, you know, with, if you would just answer this question as you think back over the, the last two days and the good feeling that we have when we wake up this morning after seeing so many extraordinary leaders doing unbelievable work, you know, what are you most proud of in terms of looking at people who are doing this work in the field? What are you most proud of? I'm most proud of the impact that you're hearing the pride in their ability to tease through what these are really complex challenges. I'm really proud of people feeling that energy, you know, coming together across organizations, not holding cards close to their vest, being vulnerable in what's working and not working, being humble in the fact that, you know, we don't have all of the answers, but we're on the right path. And knowing this fundamentally, and you, know, you and I have talked about this many times, this will fundamentally change how we think about the, the, what it means to lead, what it looks like to learn together as a team, and the impact of the actions and the profound impact it's going to have on children, families, and communities. And we'll have the proof points to show that. Yeah, what a great way to summarize and to to end our session today, just want to express my appreciation to all of you who were there with us and attended. For those of you that didn't, we'll continue to reach out with some of the resources from the conference, uh, but you would be proud. I know those of you who attended, you're proud of your colleagues and those of you that are out there doing the great work that you do, you would be so proud of what we have experienced over the last two days. Extraordinary leaders in these unpredictable times doing unbelievable things that are making a difference for our children and family and for our world. So thank you, Pat, for being with us today. Thanks, Janet. Always a pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. Look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week, everyone.